Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hello everyone, welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast. Hope everyone's week has been going well and enjoyed those spoilers that came out yesterday. Today I'm here with DC team member and good man, Liquid Snake. How's it going, my friend? Good. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, this is great. So both of us, we just like 15 minutes ago, well, probably more than that because it takes Lanza forever to spin his uh, his wheel of awesomeness. <laughs> But we, we both just got done playing the Honorage Gaming Weekly Tournament, which was an ARH only tournament, which was which was very fascinating. So that's what we're here tonight to talk about and uh, kind of give our takes on it. Hey folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us today. So had a had a great time a little bit ago. We're both uh, riding high from from having a good time. And I want to shout out to to Lanza. Right, he always does a good job with with everything he does. We you know give Lanza the community gives Lanza I think a lot of flack, but he, he does a lot of a lot of good stuff. And thank you, man, for doing it. So uh, Snake, man, how's how's it going tonight? How did how did how did things turn out? Uh, feeling really good actually the tournament was a lot of fun and like you said a huge shout out to lanza i mean yeah the, the community does give him a lot of flack but it's all in good fun i think he's uh one of, one of the best guys out there so kudos to him for running such a an exciting event and uh, had a blast yeah me me too i you know i didn't do as well as i want and i made a huge play mistake in round three yeah. and uh you know you kick yourself but uh yeah, so I mean, I guess the the first question I had for you is, you know, what do you really think about? I mean, obviously it's ARH only. There's a lot. There's a lot around that. Meaning, I mean, primarily the small card pool. But what did you think about, um, you know, this tournament itself? It brought in it brought in fourteen people, right? I think so. That's pretty good right now. So you know, what's what's your take on you know kind of it and what it means for everything? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 14 people is, is, is a large sum in comparison to most tournaments that are currently running. And, uh, you know, in, in most community chats that we've seen, there's been, you know, a lot of negativity around uh, the current meta that's going on with uh, ARH. And, and I think that having a fresh perspective or a different event such as ARH cards only um, can only mean good things. Um, it, it was a fresh take on what the game's actually going to look like without those FFG card supports. Um, a lot of people, you know, are are not too fond of the healing mechanisms for Wookiees or uh, the merchant freighter and eject combination for for pilots so i think taking a look at arh on its own can give us a, you know an organic look of what this set is going to look like in the future and what the game's going to really look like yeah well and and by set i mean we it was you know there were two sets legal right uh, yes. both fa and redemption but yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, I, I I do think it's hard to put it into context because we don't know. I mean, we know that eventually there's going to be some sort of FFG reprint in, or I shouldn't say reprint, um, FFG regal legalization, right? Yes. Uh, to some extent, and we, and we don't know what that'll look like. Uh, but I, but I think you bring up a good point in terms of putting the designed cards in terms of themselves. Um, so were there any big takeaways you had from that just from tonight or, or I mean, maybe other, other thoughts? Yeah. I mean, uh, from, from tonight, looking at such a, uh, a small card pool, uh, was, was a deck builders, uh, nightmare, I would say, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Actually, it, it gets, it gets the wheels turning. Uh, it gets you thinking about different combinations and possibilities that you might not have thought of before. And, uh, I gotta say it, it felt like destiny again. Um, I know that might sound, uh, strange but what i mean by that is it, it felt like there was more rng associated to it uh, less broken combinations uh, just just all out fun what what the game really really uh, means to me from 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 coming from a legacy's perspective that's where i started playing the game and and seeing seeing how it is now uh, it truly felt like that or organic uh, natural gameplay where it may it means something to discard to reroll it means something to you know have these uh 
big characters again, I would say. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I, you, you, you mentioned um, kind of a deck builder's nightmare, and I, I think that's an apt statement. Um, when I was going through this, and so I, I did do a, a members-only cast, by the way, If um, for those who are members watching. If you're, if you're not a member, you wouldn't have known I did this, but I did a you know cast for members-only kind of talking about what I was expecting this week and kind of the challenges around it. And, and it, it, I mean, it was a, it was a fun nightmare. I, I enjoyed doing it, but I'm sure you ran into this as well. One of the problems, and, and it was a problem in building your deck, was that there were a lot of holes because when, when FA and Redemption came out, you know, let's like, you look at like run to safety and cards like that, there was a lot of healing cards out there. So FA and Redemption were, they didn't have those because then they would have been overpopulated, right? So the holes that they intentionally left in FA and Redemption, so that because they didn't want to overpopulate what was there for FFG, were then giant holes, right? Sure. So yeah, that was like I think um, I think my last opponent he said, uh, and I'm indirectly quoting him, but I think he said red is poopy. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and he was referring to hero, I think, but um, yeah, I would, I would assume so. Yeah, um, but I mean, you know, yellow is really strong, really, really, really strong. Um, presumably because we knew that Entangle and Easy Pickings were rotating, so they probably backfilled those, and that's why yellow is probably overstrong now, right? So it's just funny how the, you know, it just keeps moving down the line, right? For sure. Um, I think speaking on yellow, I, that was kind of where I, I started with my deck building based on, on the cards that did come out. I, I thought, man, I got to get my hands on cards like, you know, Headstrong and uh, Rallying Cry or even Vibrosword, one of the strongest cards in the set, so... Uh, definitely that was a starting point for me when when i was walking into this and i thought okay i gotta have yellow but what's the right course to take so yeah no, up on, uh, yeah on cassian. I, yeah I, well i was just gonna say what so uh snake and i both ended up playing the same deck um kind of we were talking beforehand but i, I think we independently landed on the same deck um and what was your what was your uh, result on the evening so not as not as planned. I uh, finished off with uh, a two and two record. Started off strong, went two and zero, oh, and then um, it just fell apart on on the third round. But we can get into that as as we go in terms of round to round. Yeah, well, so. I mean, I, I also finished two and two, um, <laughs> but I went one zero zero one, and the guy who took me out round two is the guy who took you out round three, right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so actually, well, go ahead. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just go blow by blow. Walk us through your uh, walk us through your first round. What you what you play? What, well, not what you play, but what you play against, and kind of how to go. Yeah, so my first round, uh, I faced uh, Hondo and Second Sister, and uh, that was an interesting combination. I knew that um, with with Second Sister and her ability to turn dies um, and, and 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 flip them, it, it would be it would be a very difficult. Uh, difficult matchup if i end up rolling out melee dice so um i targeted second first and the reason i chose to do that was because i wanted to get rid of cards like unending hate uh, anything that really where you have to spot an inquisitor and get damage from hand um, so that was my thought process around it and i thought uh, it worked out pretty well because for for three straight rounds i was able to mitigate hondo's dice with a couple headstrongs and a power of the tribe so it, it was it was very very strong and effective to to remove those dice. So second sister's uh, uh, special uh, was pretty much nullified. So it was a, it was a pretty straightforward win. Um, I think my opponent only did a total of three damage that entire game. So worked out pretty well. Um, second matchup, uh, I ended up running into an interesting uh, deck. It was a three wide uh, spy deck. So he had the ISB agent. Uh, he had zero and Bing elite Bing. So it was a bunch of detect mechanics in order to get big in for an extra action and deal a ton of indirect damage. Um, going three wide, I think, in this type of format, it's kind of difficult to do. Um, it's good to get the health pool, but at the same time, yeah, your dice, your starting dice are, are, are everything. Uh, so it was easy. I took out Bing probably early second, second round, and uh, it was pretty much coast from there because the other two characters don't have any damage sides. So... He had a couple of fibro swords put down on zero by the end of I think round four, but uh, overall it was very effective to just easily remove those two dice and, and, and take the win down. And then of course we get into round three. <laughs> so round three is where I ran into um, Chewbacca and Lumpy, piloted by uh, Hypo. Um, so this deck was 
just a just a grind to play against um back and forth just uh, just the sequencing around it was very very difficult uh, trying to avoid having my character's dice resolved uh, into me with um, heroic protector uh, or even just trying to get down some, some big upgrades so i could pump some damage into to chewy that was my main target but uh, once he got a wasaki berry plant down and uh, had more than enough healing shenanigans and power actioning to move the damage from chewy to lumpy to get to six to effectively do his increased uh, damage it was it was a tough go i uh, ended up going to time and i just conceded at that point so it was a it was a tough long matchup and then for my final matchup uh, ended up playing against kylo uh, i know he's one of your favorites uh, with uh, second sister again so it was an interesting matchup um it, Kylo rolled in to begin the matchup, uh, did his two indirect damage, and I flipped both of his dice to the blanks. Normally, uh, in any other format, I'd probably avoid doing that, just for the potential of facing, say, uh, Feel Your Anger or, or Anger itself. Uh, but I thought in such a limited carpool format, maybe this isn't a good idea to give him resources so he can ramp it to more upgrades, because what, what, uh, what Blue struggles with, obviously, is resource generation. Um, and of course, what ultimately happened that round is I ran into two copies of Anger. And so he was able to effectively remove my damage dies, deal the damage back to me. Um, it was it was a it's kind of like two reversals <laughs> pretty much in the beginning. So And then you can still reroll, re right? <laughs> After that. Just... Yeah, exactly. Rough. When he did reroll, he hit the plus threes. So <laughs> it worked out for, for my opponent in that one. And then, uh, so that was your, yeah, that was your last round. Yeah, fair enough. That was my final round. Yeah. yeah. So I went two and two, but I did it differently than you did. My my first round um, wasn't wasn't too bad. Um, my first round was it was it Kylo Seventh Sister? It was. It was the Kylo Seventh Sister deck. Um, so we handled handled that okay. Um, the second round then was was hypo, and I. Also, we went down to him only having one card left in hand, and his last card in hand was a Heroic Protector. And that was my first major, major, major play mistake of the day, was I should have known it. Um, but both of us got Wasaka Berry Plant out super early, and that's why it went so long. It was just like, heal, heal, heal. And it's funny, because Wasaka Berry Plant was one of the cards that when Redemption first dropped, I was like, I think this card's busted. And obviously it's not, right, in the grand scheme of Destiny as a whole. Uh, but in this format, I think Osaka Berry Plant's pretty good, right? Yeah, pretty darn good. Um, and then my, my third game was Ball of Bing, which was, it was great to see that on the table again. I, I played it really well until a huge boner at the end where I still had my intelligence operation ready. And he had the, I forget the name of the card, but it's give one resource to deal three indirect damage. And that's all he needed for the win. And I was like, oh, sweet. I've got that detected and I can play it. Right. And then I didn't play it. <laughs> oh. Swung for the kill. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. That's why I was saving that resource. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I apologize. I think I've been saying uh, second sister. I meant seventh sister. I'm so used to the uh, the older ones, but yeah, yeah, that deck is uh, the deck is interesting. Bing oh. too. Uh, all, all of Bing. Yeah. It's... Well, I'm talking the the ten pointer that had. No, I think I mean maybe we're both misspeaking, but I'll I'll, th yeah. I'll throw it up just to clarify. But it's the one with the special that lets you flip and resolve for plus right. two. You got it. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. the one I'm talking about yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my last game was against. Oh, shoot. What was he playing? I don't even remember. It was only like 25 minutes ago, and I can't remember. Um, but that was a... It ended up being a mill victory just because we both didn't roll damage for like 800 rounds. Well, I think you played uh, Spartacus, and he was running Maul with... Yes, uh, yes. It was Maul with... Yes, you're correct. And uh, it was... And watch your career. And I've, yeah. I've run into that jank before. You got to kill Xana. So I dropped her. Oh, for sure. I dropped her ASAP, like round one or two. Like I rolled really well and I got her down, and then it was just a giant do nothing <laughs> best for the rest of the. You know, whenever you hear Lanza pop in the room and he's like, "Hey y'all, one minute," you're like, "Oh damn it!" <laughs> so, 
But I think I think uh, t- to your point where you go a few rounds without damage and you're and it came down to a mill victory. It, it kind of reminds me of the old school Destiny feel where you know there is that RNG factor to it. So um, I'm happy to hear that. I know I know it might not be the most exciting game out there in terms of uh, you know for anyone to watch where it's discard to reroll and you're not hitting any damage. But at the end of the day, like, I think it speaks to what the game is about, and uh, I'm 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 kind of happy to hear that it it actually still exists. So. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not it wasn't entirely that like there was some chess pieces to it, right? Like there was there was one round I can remember where he rolled two spec. I mean, maybe he rolled one and then flipped into one or whatever it was, but he had two mall specials out, and I had oh, Cassian I dice out, and I was just like, and and there there it was like a I think I had like a resource and a modifier, and I was just like, pass, like pass, screw yeah, it, for sure. right? Yeah. So. I mean that. I mean that's not again. It's not the most exciting thing for TV, but it's uh, that's chess match destiny, right? So sure. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. There's actually some 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 thought process to it now. It's not just simply um, I have this broken combination. I can run it, and nothing's going to beat it. So it was it was it was fun to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, ultimately recapping it, I I had a lot of fun tonight i i mean i i wish i could do these eg tournaments more it's just really hard for my time zone and still trying to you know be a responsible adult and parent for sure um but it, it was a lot of fun and, and they did a really good job uh, do you do you play in these you well I, what i mean of course you play in these often you you won the last two didn't you yes i did yeah so um i i definitely uh try to get as much time in as I can. Uh, for me, it's kind of hectic. Uh, my work schedule, I'm, I'm working pretty much all weekends. So, you know, my days off are Tuesday, Wednesday. So having EG on Wednesday is, is perfect for me. Uh, so I'm able to participate in those tournaments. And uh, it's been a blast uh, with those guys. Uh, they try to keep it fresh. Uh, they're changing it up. And it's very much like our tournaments on Sunday with with Smash or with other events. Like, I think it's it's good to have that uh, that that instead of just running standard all the time, just to keep it fresh and and keep it fun. So, but yeah, I love to participate in their tournaments. Uh, Last week before the ARH, it was a trilogies only, uh, which I took down. And then the week prior to it was an ARH standard. So it's been, it's been good. A lot of fun. Yeah, no, awesome. Awesome stuff. So, um, all right, well, Hey, I got you. And we have, we got, we got clock to burn. So, um, what are your thoughts on some of the new stuff that we've seen so far? So just to be, just to be clear to everyone, as of the time of us shooting this, not of the time of, a po- of us posting, we've seen four spoiler posts. We've seen the air H post, the I rebel post, the, so we've seen blue, we've seen Mando, we've seen, uh, Gideon. And we saw uh, IG88 and uh, Coolil and the cards associated with them. So, what what are your hot takes from the uh, set so far? Yeah, it looks really exciting. Um, looking forward to high stakes. Can't wait for that release. Uh, Mando obviously is is everyone's uh, anticipated character coming into it, and uh, having the ability to run him with three dice or with two, uh, really cool mechanic. And I'm I'm glad they brought that over. Uh, I think I think he's going to be. Uh, well, well known and well played. Maybe not meta defining, but still an excellent character design overall. Um, the one character that was really super, actually, there's two super, super excited about uh, was Moff Gideon and uh, IG11. Um, the reason I say Moff Gideon is because it, he's kind of changing the way we define a support character. Um, having three two sides for 16 point elite and the ability to play your opponent's weapons. Um, I know at a cost, obviously, to take that uh, indirect damage, but um, it's it's a pretty powerful uh, character. Or you can go with the two discard side as well, just to control your opponent. So that's really elevating the, the level of what a support character looks like. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when more cards are released to see who you can pair with, um, so we can get the full full spectrum of what Moff Gideon brings to the table. And then looking at IG-11, I mean, he's a deck builder's dream. Uh, Being able to bring in villain and hero cards as long as he's paired with a hero engineer, uh, pretty strong. Uh, His die side is is pretty good. I know his health per point ratio is not the greatest, uh, not at curve, uh, but still, just his ability alone looks looks pretty exciting. And obviously, I love the idea of pairing him with IG-88 just for that thematic uh, uh, pairing of two droid bounty hunters. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, my uh, my question for you actually on on Moff Gideon, um, I'm thinking he looks pretty good at one die, right? Just yeah, for his I, ability. I, I, 
two for sure. Yep, yeah. uh, it absolutely. Uh, even if you play him at one die, he can he can be very very uh, <laughs> very very controlling and uh, very very difficult to deal with. So it's definitely true. You can stack up those those weapons and then load up another character. Right. I mean, we'll have to see how the points flush out. I mean, he's. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, he has a pretty good die at three points. Absolutely. Right. But um, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see how he flushes out. Um, because I mean, let's be honest. If if I could tell you that you could have a zero drop card from hand that you could deal yourself indirect to make that many resources, I'm pretty sure you'd play that card, right? Yeah, so sure. I mean, yeah, he's he's looking pretty good. I mean, yeah. There's I mean, there's yeah. RNG in it as well, which you already referred to as kind of the lifeblood of Destiny. But he's looking pretty good. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to to play him. Probably going to be the first guy I put on the team. Awesome. And then what do you think about, um, uh, not Plo Koon, I keep doing that, not Plo Koon, uh, Key, Key Adi Mundi. Yeah, so Key Adi Mundi, um, I'm not, I'm not usually a, a very big blue hero, uh, fan myself, obviously since, since the beginning of the game and, and how they've struggled, but, um, he looks pretty strong for a 14 point elite character that can, um, can, can really mess with you. So he, he, he's, he's an interesting character, um. I probably won't be playing much of him, but uh, he does bring a lot of uh, different mechanics to the table. So uh, for me, for me, it's not not a not a big bonus. But um, I guess for all the blue hero players out there that play more blue hero, I think they're going to be more excited to have someone of of his caliber. And his die looks pretty strong for fourteen points too. Yeah, a uh, a fourteen pointer who can have a two focus and and deal damage like that's yeah. yeah. But shields are shields are. I mean, again, it'll depend on what yeah, they decide to do with Vader. But shields are not very good right now. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's kind of why I've, I've strayed away from Blue Hero in general. But yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's nice to see that they have that strong support. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, um, I think I think that's about it. I mean, we kind of just ran down. I, I mean, the, the whole point of this cast, I think, was really just to get to get Snake on because he. I mean, a tout tout him. He's you know taking down the last two tourneys. Uh, yeah, actually, tell us. So you ran Mall Savage, right? Two weeks ago. Uh, so the two weeks ago, I actually ran uh, Vader uh, and Savage. Oh, Vader Savage. Oh, Vader Savage. Oh, Vader Savage. Yeah, and obviously, I have a different take on that deck than most people. Um, I only run a ten upgrade package, uh, and it's all ability. And I love that card, and we've talked about it on previous casts before with the uh, uh, Dark Reflections to obviously flip three dice to the three side. It's very powerful in that deck. Uh, not many people are running it, but you know I, I think it's something to consider. Uh, even in the beginning, uh, I try to avoid actually flipping Savage. His dies with the three for one are actually pretty pretty valuable, and I see a lot of people make that mistake to spend you know three resources on Savage and flip him uh, before you even start putting upgrades on the table. So. It's a it's it's an interesting deck. I still think there's ways to beat it, but yeah, it's it's definitely a, a a tough one right now with with the state of the meta and how there's really not much that can that can compete with it. Um, in the second tournament, um, it was a trilogy's event. Um, I actually got to give some kudos to uh, Norman from uh, EG. Uh, I actually picked up uh, his his Raylo uh, trilogy deck um, off off the DB. It wasn't labeled as a trilogy deck, but when I looked at it, and I well, thought, and, and I can can you clarify real quick what what trilogy this was, by the way? Oh, sure, yes, yeah, trilogy. So this was the uh, Convergence uh, block trilogy. So Convergence, Spark of Spark of Hope, and uh, obviously Covert Missions uh, with the Faltering Allegiance pack as well so um it was it was an interesting tournament uh ran into a couple boba jangos which was nice to see again um you missed those guys they were a great deck and that's then, a good finals, deck dude yeah, definitely definitely in trilogies for sure too right like it, it, it 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 can pump out that damage and then in the finals it was the classic glass cannon of the two trandos and the idt mm. uh, so that was that was a a good matchup for me because of ray uh ray's ability to just utilize her specials for shields and obviously using her power action to just continuously blank their dies if they use their power action was was very advantageous so yeah and you can drop you can do six damage pretty easy first round i mean that's kind of raylo's thing is they can drop yeah they can drop real quick if they're if yeah. they're weak or you know if they're yeah. wide yeah that's a good MVP matchup for you deck, actually yeah oh for sure and mvp yeah. of the deck was actually a, a card called bloodletting bloodletting was was mm. huge and it's nice to get that down early when you have the shields so you can just continuously flip to your your shields without taking any damage it's, it was very powerful oh very nice very nice i'm in back to back to back wins um <laughs> 
but 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 not tonight. But not tonight. Yeah, not tonight. <laughs> you can you can join me join me in the dregs of the two too. So that's okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I again I, I had a lot of fun. Um, they do again. I want to recommend the EG to everybody watching. I want to rec- recommend the EG tournaments if you can if you can make it happen for you and how it works. Um, you you should you should do so. That's a good time and. Basically, I think everybody walked away with something off of Lanza's, Lanza's wheel of power or whatever. We yeah, have. I think I think everyone loves the the Lanza wheel. It's uh, it's really garnering a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, people to come join the tournaments now. So, um, but yeah, I just want to say huge thank you for for having me on the cast and and obviously just for even showing up tonight, Andrew. I really appreciate the support. Um, you know, I think I think it's great to get more dice commandos out there to represent. Um, even a shout out to Wookie Smell. I know I saw he I saw he was in the lobby too and playing with us. So that was that was awesome to see uh, see more commandos. Yeah, and I, I think this was uh, I think this was Wookie's first one too. I think he joined up because of the because of the member cast. So pulling in pulling in love to EG. Um, they should they should send you like a like a tip or something for uh, bringing in <laughs> bringing in extra players. Um, but no, and then we also saw John. Uh, I think he's done it before, but John from Virginia. Shout out to him. Um, yeah. I actually got to play with him in in person before at Curio Cavern and uh, JGH one two eight. But John, you rock, man. Um, always love seeing you out there, and hope to see you again, my friend. So, uh, yeah, I think that'll pretty much do it for tonight. Uh, you got anything to shout out before we get out of here? Uh, not really. Just uh, for anyone that's watching, you know, like we always say, go commando. Go commando.